Hi there and welcome along to another workout for you to row along to. Today is going to be another of the choose your adventure rows. What we're going to do is four eight minute intervals with one minute rest in between and we're going to do all of these at 20 strokes per minute. But depending on whether you're a beginner rower, whether you want a lower intensity, mid intensity or top intensity workout, you can pace this differently. So let's get through our range of intensities. If you're a beginner rower and you've never really rowed this kind of session before, then really what I want you to do is just strap in and row, okay? So pick an intensity that you're pretty sure you can finish 32 minutes worth of rowing. So it's likely to be that you're just kind of going so that you're breathing a little bit heavier, but you're not going kind of full guns, okay? Because that might tire you out way too quick. Now, if you're going for the bottom tier, the lower intensity, that's probably going to be run about a similar pace to those beginner folks. Now, if you've got a 2K pace, then that's going to be round about 2K plus 18. But if you want to work from an effort point of view, then you're looking at around about 5 out of 10 on the perceived effort scale. Now, if you want a middle tier intensity, well, let's just go 4 seconds faster. Let's go 2k plus 14 for your mid tier intensity and keeping it at 20 strokes per minute. And then finally, for the max top tier session, folks, I want you to go round about 2k plus 10. So if you can hold all four intervals at 2k plus 10 at 20 strokes per minute, this is going to be a tiring workout, all right? So the only real thing I'd say is don't mix and match between all of these pace guys. Pick the pace you want to do and stick to it, okay? This is training merits to stick into each one, but if you start to do a little bit of bottom, a little bit of top, then you're kind of in the no, man, no man's land and blah, even even fluff my lines because it's such a no man's land. So anyway, as such, because this is a 20 strokes per minute row, we're going to do a four minute warm up. Now you max folks, if you want to warm up a little bit longer so that you're properly warm, please do. But otherwise, we're just going to do a four minute warm up. All right. Now, as always, we start off by setting up our machine and we go straight to the drag factor. Set it where you want it to be. I'm still rowing in a low drag factor because I'm trying to work on my technique. Next up, go to your monitor and set it to eye height so you're not having to look up and you don't have to look down. And finally, those foot straps should cover a point, probably round about the bottom lace on your shoe, or at least they let you get forwards to your shins into a vertical position without making it too difficult to get there because your feet are too set too high. All right. You can tell I knew today was going to be a long intro, which is why I was speaking at a thousand miles an hour. So a four minute warm up. Now we're going to do this at 18 strokes a minute. Follow me and we're going to start off at round about like a body weight squat intensity. I don't want you to push too hard. We're just going to work on timing for the first 20 seconds or so. All right. So here we go then in three, two, one. Let's go. So what I mean by body weight squat is as though you're just standing up from a squat position no weight across your back or anything okay so that's the only amount of connection I want and what I want you to do is to concentrate on pushing into the foot plates okay so pushing the machine away from you not pushing you backwards and then as you're doing that try to get the timing right so that as you push with your feet that's when the handle connects with the flywheel or the water wheel or whatever you're using ferris wheel pizza wheel who knows and then as we get through to this first minute in the warm-up and your timing's right I want you to start increasing the pressure from your legs If you have a 2k training pace, I want you to get up to run about 2k plus 20. If you don't have a 2k training pace and have absolutely no idea what I'm on about, then row a 2000 meter time trial, divide the resulting time by four, and that gives you the average pace that you covered 500 meters at not your fastest the average across the whole 2k and that's how I describe the pace you row at set your monitor to the slash 500 meter split pace and that's you all right last stroke let's put one foot on the floor continue rowing with one foot strapped in this should really only feel different by virtue of the fact you've got one foot on the floor 
you shouldn't really be doing anything wacky to your technique. You should still be pushing with that leg. You should still be connecting the handle at the right time. Set one foot on the floor. Swap feet. There we go, continue going. I know I raced through the 2K pace description. So if you want fuller info, I actually write it in the description for all the rows. So you can go and read it just to be sure. Okay, three more strokes here. One more, make sure to still push off that leg. Okay, both feet in, legs straight. We're just gonna roll with our back and arms. So swing over your hips and then pull in your arms, then push out your arms and swing back over your hips. Now I want you just to hinge forwards and backwards here. You're not rounding and craning in your upper or lower back. You're just hinging over your hips. Right? Let's roll to the front with straight arms, forward lean, and press out. Don't have to go too hard. We're again just working on the timing here of that connection between the foot press and the handle, but also trying to keep this forward lean and the arm straight as you do so. So don't push so hard that you end up flying backwards and resetting your posture. One more stroke here. Oh. And we're all done. Felt like I had loads to fit into the warm-up today and I didn't quite get it. I was speaking at Limos an hour because that's the only way I could try to get in. Which, I've already got Scottish accent and I speak really quick anyway. Maybe hard to understand. Good luck with the CC closed captioning anyway. Maybe that's why YouTube stopped it. <laughs> anyway, sorry I'm waffling. Move up another rail, have a quick drink. I'll explain one more time what we're doing today. Okay then, so today's session is very simple. We're just going to do four eight minute intervals at 20 strokes per minute with one minute rest in between. Now if you're a beginner rower, I want you to just do this at a pace that you know you can manage it at, okay? Just spend this time working on your technique and trying to hold a constant pace throughout, okay? That's the important part is pick a pace and just hold it for this entire row. Now if you're at the bottom intensity today, then I want you to do this run about 2K plus 18 pace. If you're the mid intensity, then I want you to do it 2K plus 4 which is obviously going to be a little bit harder or if you want to be absolute top tier max then I want you to do it at 2k plus 10 or faster okay so it's all simple it's all a good way to do it everyone gets a good workout and we all row along together all right as for me I'm doing this at the bottom tier because yesterday I did quite a tough race pace row and quite frankly my legs are not excited by the prospect of doing anything intense today so I'm going to go for a nice recovery pace all right Okay then, so let's get into our first eight minute interval in three, two, one. Let's go. So follow me for stroke rate, either on the video, if you're watching this on YouTube, or if you're doing the podcast thing, then you should be able to hear the whoosh of my flywheel coupled with my speaking pattern that should give you a good indication of when I'm taking my strokes but then once you just get locked into the rhythm of rowing one stroke every three seconds hopefully you won't need to worry about watching or listening to me Uh, one thing to quickly say for the YouTube folks is you'll notice there's no heart rate up on screen today. That's because there's something a bit squiffy right now going on with Bluetooth heart rate monitors and the PM5. It's either PM5 Bluetooth or a phone connection via Bluetooth, who knows, but it's been playing havoc with the monitor 
and the folks at ErgZone have suggested maybe it's heart rate monitor related so I'm trying today's session without it attached just to see if that solves things right so we're two minutes in which after our four minute warm up should mean that now you're nice and warm now for the benefits of those that are doing the max or top tier intensity today I'm going to quickly talk about just the body positions for the drive phase of the stroke because that is where if you get it wrong you're most likely to get injured or if nothing else lose a lot of pace so the really important part or parts of the dry phase are firstly that you think about pushing with the legs rather than it being about pulling the handle back you might think it's about the handle but it's not it's about getting power into the handle so you push with the legs but in order to get that power into the handle without pulling the handle you need to make sure that as you push with your legs you've got nice straight arms to let the power flow into the machine but also when you are at the front taking your leg drive you want a forward lean so that the power just flows through your body via a braced core and those straight arms and it means you're not fighting against that power through your lower back or if you are tugging early on the handle you're not at risk of fighting that power with your biceps so forward lean arms straight and then push the machine away push now as long as you've got that forward lean braced core and arms straight as you push the machine away with your legs or feet whatever in order to hold that forward lean and keep your arms straight you have to basically hang off the handle and because obviously the handle is attached to the flywheel as you're pushing with your legs that hanging off the handle then transfers in to the flywheel and that's all just from power from your legs and it's only when you get right about halfway if not more through your leg drive that you finally 
swing your back from that forward lean into a backward lean, funnily enough. And then, not as an afterthought, but only after your backswing has begun, do you finally pull with the arms. But like I say, it's not an afterthought. I want you to still finish strong. So when you do start pulling, which is here at the back end, oh here, oh here, then I want you to make sure to finish strong. Get that handle into your chest, right about sternum height, elbows through your sides. If you want to flare out, flare out. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. And that's a good finish to your stroke. Hopefully injury free. Two strokes to go. Last stroke. Whew. Oh. Now, hopefully it's the same as you, but I loved that first interval. Maybe I should have done a fast one today because that felt lovely. Have a drink. Uh, might only be four sets of eight minutes, but you have to make sure to stay nicely hydrated. Sorry, just checking the sound department. You're right in there. Still flashing away. I actually recorded this session three days ago on a glorious day out in the garden and it was so sunny, so hot the camera couldn't take and that it shut down I did consider just posting it as a podcast but then when today I realised I wanted a recovery row I thought I'd do that with you instead Right, seven seconds to go wiggle your backside pick up your handle three, two, one, go and we're back into it again so these one minute rests are just there to give you a chance to have a drink and recover and the recovery is different for everyone the beginner rower if this is the longest session that you've done before like 32 minutes rowing then just breaking it up into eight minute chunks mentally should make it less daunting for you then for the bottom tier folks that one minute rest should mean that your heart rate gets a chance to settle down a little bit to try to combat any risk of cardiac drift which can see your heart rate climb past the training zone that is most effective the whole UT2 or 65% max whatever you want to call it basically long steady state stuff where your heart rate doesn't really spike So those women at rest give you a chance to keep it nice and sensible. Mid-tier folks, well, usually the point of the mid-tier rows is exposure to hardship, okay? I like that phrase. I think it was the mindset RX people that I picked that up from but basically if you're rowing these at 2k plus 14 it should be manageable but there will come a point when you think you know what 
this isn't a walk in the park. I actually have to put in some effort in order to complete this row. But I know that as long as I decide to put in that effort, I will complete the session, no worries. But exposure to that question is really important because in pretty much any time trial or race that you do, there will become a point where you've got loads of strength and fitness left, but things will start to burn. Hopefully you understand what I mean there. Your muscles will kind of, the balance will shift. They're no longer able to efficiently burn the fuel. So the burn sets in. So you've got loads and loads of energy, but it just starts to get a bit, hang on, I'm gonna have to push here. And what you don't wanna do is be in the middle of a 2K time trial or 5K, 10K, whatever you're doing. And that sensation pops up and you've never really experienced it. You've never developed the confidence to go, all right, that's just the first line I have to cross for performance. So that question is asked. You say, I am more than willing to, to cross that line right now, thank you. And then you continue through the interval, knowing you can complete it at the mid tier, but just that you have to put in some work. And then in today's session, you get to do that four times. And then so the one minute rest for you folks is just there is a way for your body to recover enough that you can start the next interval back at a bit of an easier state but then that question will rise again quicker than the time before but again you should be able to complete the session you just have to hang on now the top tier folks, the one minute recovery for you is really just time to have a drink, towel down and mentally prepare for a tough eight minutes. You should, right over the first four minutes of each interval, you should be okay, you'll go from the bottom tier walk in the park and then that first line will be asked of are you sure you want to continue? to which you say yep because I'm in control but then you'll then hit a point of let's just call it discomfort I don't want to put words in your mouth but it'll basically feel like you're really having to work this is the second line that you approach the one where you know you really have to push in order to complete whereas the mid tier you know if you push you will complete these top tier ones you're pushing to make sure you complete 
and then it just escalates in intensity as you go on so top tier folks definitely taking the hard way today two strokes one more so no matter what tier you've gone for make sure you have a drink moving up and down the rail now it's 32 minutes worth of rowing today with three minutes rest in between for you top tier folks at 2k plus 10 that should still be well within your manageable limits i mean do i think my um my half hour pb i think was 151 which would have been 2k plus 11. so not that far off what you're rowing at but then you get a bunch of rests so kind of evens out but it is top tier don't be worried about the fact that it's tough six seconds to go four three two one go and we're back into it again i'll get back to technique in a second but it's quite a flippant remark i just made coming into this about how it's top tier blah 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 but the fact is you sit down in the machine and especially on a session like this that isn't part of a structured plan if you chose the tough path then to <laughs> to use a quote if you live by the sword you die by the sword hopefully you won't die trust me you'll pass out before you die but it's in all seriousness though do be careful if you think you're going to pass out stop uh, but when it comes to training for performance it doesn't magically just come you can't just sit on the machine blast out a few low rate 10k's and then expect to be faster at your 2k depending on your level you never know you might be if it's just fitness that you needed at first like say you've got a 2k average of 230 it might just be a few 10k's will give you the fitness you need in order to get that down to 220 but comes a point when you need to match your fitness increases with strength and power increases too and that's where these top tier rows come in that's when you're actually trying to build your top end whether that's physical pushing power of each stroke or whether it's about going at a pace where your cardio system is working at like 90 to 100 percent to give you that anaerobic fitness rather than aerobic fitness it's all part of the training and something that you need to embrace you need to choose it in fact these red wristbands that I wear are actually 
what they say is nothing beats me and I alone chose power which are actually both paraphrases from the book Assault on Lake Cetus the Brad Brad oh his second aim's gone oh that's disappointing sorry Brad Lewis uh, I'll put a link in it link to it in the description but he basically had a thing on his wall that said nothing beats us for the crew he was in and then this saying about how he alone chose power and it really resonated with me in that every time you sit down to a tough session there is going to be a point where like I say that hardship is going to rear its head and you get questioned as to whether you want to continue or not at the pace you're rowing and that's when you remember that you chose this nobody's making you do this you alone chose power so keep on putting it into the machine keep on working on building that power whether it's by growing your foundation fitness with these 20 strokes a minute 2k plus 18 paces or whether it's the top tier 20 strokes a minute 2k plus 10 pieces you chose it because you believe that that is the session that you need to do today in order to be fitter faster and stronger that's what my t-shirt says trust me I didn't plan this today but so far between the wristbands and the t-shirt I'm wearing all the right kit all I need to do next is talk about the influence of Van Halen to explain my shorts and we'll have a full menagerie but hopefully you understand if you are dreading sessions then you need to reframe your mind be that by taking a week off or literally by changing your mindset approach to the sessions maybe you don't like the long slow stuff but remember that's what gives you the big engine to do the showboat stuff so make yourself rethink so you enjoy them all right two one oh. what interval was that is that the third one no oh it is oh. I've obviously I'm lost in my, my own head I would have put money on that being only interval 2 we're almost done I'll have a I'll quickly just cover technique for the first few minutes of the next interval just because 
With this last one, this could be when fatigue starts to set in. Just for info, my heart rate is down at 135 right now, in case you care. Apple Watch is still here, but it's not connected to my monitor, so... Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, go! Oh. So last one, which eight minutes, 20 strokes a minute, is only 160 strokes. So you can manage this, no matter what tier you're on. 160 strokes is easy. Even if you just count down your strokes, it's a great way to just not worry about what's ahead of you. You're just counting down. I like going like 16, 15, like for 10s. Instead of thinking 150, 140. So we're a minute into this one, so 14. And make sure that everything's still all lined up. The great thing about 20 strokes a minute is that you have time in the stroke to make sure your technique is all lined up nicely. You have time to get into your position at the catch and then drive with straight arms, forward lean, up in your sit bones. So that forward lean means that your hips are tilted forwards and your shoulders are past your hips. Your core is braced as you start the drive. As you come in to the catch, I want nice loose arms, loose shoulders, ready so that when I take the stroke, I can brace, hang off the handle, and it's not tension that's doing it. I'm just hanging, braced, as my legs pour that power into the machine. Handle height is at a nice neutral height in front of me. I'm not up in the air, I'm not down in the puddings. I'm looking straight forwards. Chin remains neutral through the stroke because if I look up, my back swings early, losing power, causing potential injury. Push the machine away with your legs, hang off the handle, and then halfway through that leg drive, that's when you swing over your hips into a powerful finish into the 11 o'clock position with a braced core and pull your arms into a finish. Get your legs down. Don't lock your knees, but get your legs down as your finish of the handle comes in. So there's no momentum that you need to fight against by pulling on the foot straps. You do not need to use your foot straps. to stop you at the back of the machine or 
to pull you back to the front of the machine especially at 20 strokes a minute once your rate gets up it's a good idea to be in the foot straps but down at 20 you don't need to and I'll prove it to you so left foot is out right foot is out so you will notice that I have neither fallen off the back of the machine nor am I stranded at the back unable to get forwards again and that is because as I finish I send the handle straight back out again at the same pace I brought it in at and then that helps the momentum of my back to swing over my hips again Oof. and then by the time the handle is past my knees I'm in that forward lean all of my momentum and mass has shifted forwards so all I have to do is bend my knees and I will effortlessly roll to the front of the machine but the real key there is posture you have to make sure that the front of the stroke and at the back of the stroke you have a powerful posture that's braced as you start braced as you finish then relax brace relax brace relax because what you don't want to do is finish with your hips all rolled back and under because that will leave you stranded at the back of the machine you'll lose power left right and center and I'm going to say you will but your likelihood of injury goes through the roof a lower back injury I mean okay we're almost there again didn't even get a chance to entertain you with any personal stories it's a shame just ranted on about I alone chose power alright last stroke ta-da there we go and that's it that's today's main session done so we'll just have a quick drink move a tiny bit just for another 45 seconds or so oh. and then we'll jump into a two minute cool down just to make sure that everything eases down depending on what intensity you just did that session at you might want to start this cool down at a higher or lower if you're just doing a top tier chances are you're still lying on the ground right now in which case don't worry wait until you've recovered then come do the cool down but we do come back maybe start a little bit faster and then ease off okay so five seconds to go three two one let's go Whoa. I had undefined rest set there so I had to push my button to start it that's why I suddenly went quiet it's so around about 18 strokes a minute again here for the cool down most people probably run about 2k plus 30 pace or about 3 or 4 out of 10 but if you need to go at a different pace in order to 
make sure that you cool down properly then please do the important part here is just that you are continuing your muscles working a little bit so that the blood with the lactic acid just doesn't just sit in your muscles you're getting a chance to pump it around your body an intensity that's light enough that hopefully your body can metabolize it and get it out of your system and that'll prevent soreness the next day or being overly tired and things plus it's just really important after a session where you may have been taxing yourself a bit either through intensity or focus on your technique or let's face it listening to me you might just want two minutes to decouple of course I'm still talking so that's not going to help <laughs> sorry hey I find myself entertaining so I have to assume the entire world finds me entertaining at least on a rowing machine see when I'm off the rowing machine I hardly talk but something oh, last stroke something gets into me the moment I'm on a rowing machine there's a camera rolling just can't stop yakking anyway hopefully it gets you through a session if nothing else even if you don't even follow what I'm saying about technique or pacing or whatever if just listening to me chunter away there you go chunter Scottish word probably I've not done the, Sc the Scottish words of the day yeah just listening to me helps pass the time I'm better than a podcast although I am actually also a podcast hey there's a link for you which actually if you're listening to this in a podcast do leave me a comment leave a review whatever just so I know because I mean I've had what 15,000 downloads since I started it a few months back hardly anyone gets in touch don't know why maybe they just don't make it this far <laughs> anyway uh, I'm gonna go have something to eat it's Friday which means it's spaghetti day yes been looking forward to Friday all all week ever since last Friday I've been looking forward to Friday again so um, spagball Fridays if you don't know um, are a big thing in my house where Julie and I have actually where are we where yeah I think next week will be the 20th anniversary of us living together obviously we're married we're not living in sin we're not yeah we're not going to be cast cast to the beard or the deer fires well I'm a pirate mm. um, yeah so um, yeah so that and and so Ed, my point being that every Friday night that we've been living together for a bar like going away on holidays or if we've got a night out or whatever we'll have spaghetti bolognese on a Friday night so I figure we maybe only missed about 30 or 40 tops so it's a lot of spaghetti bolognese I do like my spaghetti anyway so there we go so I hope you enjoyed today's session it certainly was a good one I really enjoyed that um, it, it was the perfect session after what I did yesterday and it's proof in my head anyway that if you get the energy balance right then you should never really get to a point where you're like oh, I'm exhausted and I can't row today so although I had a tough session yesterday coming into that one as a bottom tier workout um, which initially I thought oh, I'm gonna have to do bottom tier because I'm a bit exhausted after yesterday actually it turned out that the, the my energy was exactly wrapped up in a blue fireball of amazingness in terms of how I felt obviously performance but how I felt um, because I just went to the bottom tier so this is the thing about why you you kind of go up and down this kind of roller coasters that as long as you make sure and buddy up the top tiers with the bottom tier then you never really kind of go into the overdraft of energy where suddenly you're going to end up under recovered and things so this this is yeah so for me this is real proof obviously you don't know how I feel right now but you can tell the fact that I'm a little bit hyper and I'm talking away rather than hanging out my backside that I feel great after that to the point that I might go and do a little weight session or something now so probably won't I'm probably going to have some spaghetti bolognese to be honest but the first thing first I should really just say goodbye because this has gone on way too long this is where my YouTube algorithm just shelves off because everyone's like oh, I'm fed up with you now but hopefully you've been stretching or cooling down through this so thank you so much for being part of my wee life I really do uh, appreciate every single one of the views I get it's one of the one of the benefits of actually the view numbers I get is that actually I do kind of look at it and think wow I can't believe that these people are choosing to to sit and, and row and I've got to figure that all the views I get are actually people that are rowing along with me not just people that are interested and in going oh what's this guy and they listen to me and they go oh he's still talking oh I'm, I'm away I'm gonna go listen I'm gonna go load up that guy with his top off instead he's much hunkier than him but I'm trying I'm doing, I'm doing what... anyway, right 
I'm going, I promise. Stay safe, be well, bye-bye. Oh, wait, hashtag. Oh, I didn't do that. Ah, um, see, now I'm going to make you hang around. What did we talk about? Oh, I, I know. Hashtag, I alone chose power. I've got a bunch of these, actually. If I could work out how to distribute them, I'd send them out to people. But yeah, yeah so I alone chose power. That's the hashtag for today. All right. See ya. Thank you.